Pupoligabigo is a Johannesburg-based pan-Africanist band. Now, the band, in partnership with The Forge, will be organizing regular community events under the theme Amanzi Sessions, Love, Healing and Resistance. Now, these sessions will focus on addressing the prevalent issue of alcohol abuse within our communities. Band leader and composer Ntlantla Ngaku joins us now in studio for more. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Yeah, you did. <laughs> Ntlantla, thank you so much for your time <laughs> and for you. joining us. Thank Tell you. us a little bit about Ipopoliga I mean, there's 14 of you. One would assume it's an orchestra. <laughs> Nine years in the making. Um, how did this band come about and why specifically that name? Uh, the band started in 2015. Um, so after getting this vision, I spoke to um, fellow students, you know, from Ever City. Okay. As we'd always play together from like class practicals, ensembles. So it just made sense for me to work with people that I'm comfortable with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so that's how it started. And also at that time, I was engaging the text of who Steve Bigo, I write what I like. Also consuming a lot of music of Moses Mudalekwa. And the two just connected jazz and black consciousness. And um, bring it, bringing it to my own interpretation, you know, I had to sort of like decolonize it to say Ipupol Gabigo instead of Bigo's dream. Right. Coming from uh, one of uh, the late great pianist Moses Melegua's songs, uh, Bigo's dream. And so now Ipupol refers to God, uh, the giver and fulfiller of dreams. And Bigo refers uh, to all uh, revolutionaries, basically, you know, who fought uh, for the liberation and the emancipation of uh, blacks in the diaspora. Mm, that's so beautiful. Now, you're gearing up to host the fortnightly community sessions. You've partnered up with The Forge. Just talk us through what these sessions are about and where they'll be taking place. Uh, so, Aman's the session, if, when we speak of water, you know, um, water is for nurturing, water is for healing, um, water is for cleansing, purification, right. you know, and so we attempt to do that with our music, to nurture, to heal, you know, um, to cleanse, to purify, you know, and um, it comes at a time whereby uh, we, the youth in this country, we face a lot of uh, challenges, uh, we have a big problem of um, depression amongst the youth and one of the causes is unemployment. If you go to a Tembisa on a Monday, you go to the weekend, it's packed. You know, you go to my my even on a Monday, it's packed, young people drinking. So there's a high um, level of consumption of alcohol and we can't deny yeah, its uh, negative effects. And so now as a band, as we've been performing around, most of the spaces where we perform, there is also a consumption of alcohol. So mm. what came to mind was like, it would be interesting to see how people would respond to music in sobriety. You know, because the overarching theme is that your, your music is so healing, you know. And so it became interesting to me to say, really, how would healing look like in a space of sobriety and uh, the forge has been very much um, good to us and open to the community, you know, and we found it to be a very conducive space for us to attempt uh, this project. Mm. And not in a space where people are intoxicated and singing gospel music because that's where we think the healing <laughs> is happening and it's not yeah. necessarily the, the case. Yeah. Um, using, staying on that, I mean, using art to eradicate social issues. How important was that for the band? Because I believe that amongst the 14 members of the band, there has been a touch of um, struggling with alcohol within those band members. Mm. Was this something very close to some of you? Definitely, definitely it is close to us. And I mean, it's, it's also like just normalized within the industry. Mm. And unfortunately for others, it goes beyond alcohol. For others, it's drugs as well, you know. But alcohol is a common thing amongst um, artists. And so it is not just only for the audience, you know. We are also coming to say we need this healing um, as a band, yeah. Mm. And what do you hope to achieve with these community sessions? I mean, you speak of healing, but how much more of an impact would you want to leave once you're done with these sessions? We, are, we pretty much don't know what to expect because we've never seen any. This is one of its kind, you know. I've tried to think where in the country do you find 
a community of artists trying to use art for healing and this absence of alcohol. But also, what we're trying to achieve in a way, it is to say this is not um, a first. We are trying to, when we think of the 76 moment, you know, mm. in terms of how they were regular meetings of young people who wanted social change. And out of those meetings, we found great writers, we found great poets, we found uh, great um, uh, revolutionaries from those moments. And so what we are trying to achieve is to have artists that will be spiritual, um, artists that will be uh, conscious and that will also respect um, the craft. And this now, because it happens during the day, like from 5 till 7 p.m., it will also be very receptive of younger kids as well. More especially because there's no alcohol consumption. So, so even no kids alcohol is allowed into the premises. Within the space, no man's in Japan. Only just water. That's absolutely yeah. amazing. Yeah. I mean, what are the challenges that you think you could possibly come across in putting together these sessions? Do you think people will be receptive to them? Do you think people will not attend because they feel that I can't bring in my alcohol? Because we've been socialized, like you say, <laughs> in such a way to think that for us to have fun, there needs to be alcohol there. I mean, once the vision is there, it is no longer so much about the majority in terms of what they will want or not. We trust and believe that since this vision has been dropped in our hearts, those who are meant to be in these sessions, they will come through. Mm, yeah. That's absolutely amazing. You, 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 the basis of your music um, is indigenous African and jazz. I mean, you, you mm. speak of Moses Daiwa Mulelekwa as one of the main inspirations. Who mm. else? inspires this 14-piece band? Yeah, there's a lot. And um, it is not only musicians, as I spoke earlier, of, of Steve Biko, um, Robert Sobukwe, um, Mamire Makeba, you know, in terms of how versatile she was. Mm. You know, she was the greatest. And in terms of how she could also maneuver different languages and how she never minced her words in terms of um, speaking truth to power, you know, um, you look at Fela Good is our inspiration, uh, Zim Rawana, um, you look at Begim uh, Selegu, you know, so they are just uh, many of them, but mostly it is our surroundings that influence us. Mm. Yeah. Speaking of surroundings, and I mean, you mentioned earlier on that it's not necessarily on the quantity of the people that would be attending these sessions, mm -hmm. but more the quality and the impact that you would have on them. One would think that with a music jo genre such as jazz, you're, you only are able to reach to a minority of the young people because it seems the popular genres, Ama Piano, mm -hmm. are the ones that seem to lead the pack in terms of having more people attend concerts, attend sessions. What is it in your music that you feel attracts the right people? I feel like when given the chance, the people do appreciate uh, the music. It's just unfortunate that all of this is dependent on mass media. Of course. So when people wake up in the morning, when they go to school, coming back late from work, from school, what's playing on the radio is Amapiano, which you mentioned, you know, and all these other genres. So for as long as that state, that is the state, and that's how people always appeal to that. But what we've found out is that when young people actually come to the shows, they actually love the music. It's something that they really appreciate and we do understand. That's mainly because they are fed one particular thing and therefore they will never yearn for something that they are not exposed to. Mm. Yeah. And how do you think mainstream media can change that perception in having this healing type of, of artistry present in our everyday lives? It's going to be tricky, <laughs> like under capitalism, it's going to be tricky because uh, that's one thing that is not palatable to uh, capitalism. Capitalism seeks to lull young people. Capitalism enjoys seeing young black youth drowning themselves into alcohol. So if you are coming and say, guys, can we take, can you just pause for a Monday and be sober and think in terms of how we can better our lives, that's something that does not serve capitalism. So for as much as 
for as long as mass media and capitalism are intertwined, mm. it's going to be quite tricky. It's going to take Hence, some time. the revolution is the solution. It certainly <laughs> is. Do you, do you find that Ipu Poligabigo as a group and the type of music that you produce um, has a space globally in terms of finding expression in other countries and having an influence there? Of course, definitely, definitely. Um, yeah, there has there has been like invitations from like we do have a following in Germany, in France, in Nigeria. You know, um, yeah. Every now and then we just check our stats. You know, in terms as we are planning at some point to have that uh, international tour. So definitely the music is appealing, and I think also because. Africa is the mother of all musics, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so definitely there is um, that avenue for us. That appetite. Mm -hmm. So lastly, just tell us about these sessions. Where are they taking place? Um, how can people access you? And what should they expect in, in those afternoon sessions? Okay, so the sessions will take place. Uh, the next, we will first pilot and just see in terms of like how we can continue but the plan is to have them weekly but then the two days that are confirmed is the 22nd of april and the 6th of may 5 p.m till uh, 7 p.m at the forge in pram it's on a uh, reserve uh, street uh, so basically we'll also be collaborating with some artists from uh, the community who also like have guests so I guess people will only find out when they get there in terms of what it is because even now we don't really know how it will turn out but then we are clear in terms of the vision but then uh, people can follow us on our social media at Pupolgabigo, uh, Instagram Pupolgabigo, on Facebook, Twitter at Pupolgabigo, and any other inquiries they can email us at pupolgabigo.gmail.com all right, Ntantla, thank you so much for your time and for joining us. This is certainly very healing, and I, I, I implore many young people to be able to take up on this music and really enjoy themselves at those sessions. Thank you for your time and for joining us. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's an absolute pleasure. That was Ipupo Ligabigo, band leader and composer Ntlantla Ngaku, speaking to us there about some of the sessions that will be held in the coming weeks. Do